He had a Chinese <laughs> restaurant across the street from Mustard's Last Stand. In Boulder, there's a hot dog place from Chicago Hot Dogs. That's a great name. With pickles in that motherfucker. Mustard's oh, oh, Last Stand. Mustard's Last Stand. That's fucking great. And across the street was a Chinese <laughs> restaurant in those days. <laughs> I put together for comedy, right? Okay. So I put them together for comedy. I had my friends do me a huge favor. I had this kid, Todd Jordan, <laughs> and this kid, Rick Kearns. I made the bar guy give me a dollar tab, and I told him to give me three fifty for the comedians. So I ended up, I gave Todd Jordan 150 I gave the feature 100 and I kept 100 So whatever that comes out to be. So I made a little money, and then, but Ron sold $3,000 at the bar. He had never sold that much. And I read, I met Ron selling neon. I used to sell neon door to door. What? So I come in, give you a flyer with an open sign, and then ten, how much you want for the open? In those days, open signs were just becoming popular. 200 I don't stall it for you. 200 I give you a little yes, we're open sign. Yeah, and he goes two hundred. <laughs> I give you one fifty in Chinese food, fifty dollar credit. No, fuck that, Ron. I want two hundred and a hundred in credit, cocksucker. Fuck it, Ron. Okay, you install Ron. right. Okay, his name was Ron. You install right now. Do you know how long I milked Ron for? I had Ron paying my rent. <laughs> I had Ron give me. Uh, Ron was a bad motherfucker. For one sign. Listen, one sign. He paid me two hundred for, man. and it cost him ten thousand. <laughs> In those days, when I put my <laughs> hooks in you, it was all no, over. No. It cost him 10000 And then I did the comedy show, <laughs> and I put money in his pocket. And if you know anything about Chinese people, once they do 3000 at the bar, they lose their mind. He would call me every day. And I knew I had Ron. I go, Ron, listen, I got it. So I had Ron for like a year on the... <laughs> I had Ron on the, listen oh, to no. this. I had Ron. <laughs> Ron still hasn't recovered. Ron's been going through his books. Like, Ron would There's this whole to... area right here. It's all in the fucking red. I had Ron. He would never be a Facebook friend. I would call Ron. Hello, who's there? Ron, this is Joe Diaz, Ron. You going to be there in 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what go on? What go on, Joe? Listen, I got a big deal going on. I'll be there in 10 minutes. I'm going to tell you all about We're going to make a ton of money. No, no, you tell me. And I'd hang up on him. <laughs> I'd hang up on him, which drove him crazy. Yeah, yeah. By the time I got to the restaurant, he'd be out there, where you been? Where you been? <laughs> Tell me about Big Deal. And I go, listen. And I just make up a name. Like, listen, you know John Wayne? <laughs> yeah, I know John Wayne. Listen, he wants to come and have him come in here and do comedy. But he needs a deposit. Give me 350 right now from the bar. Yeah, 350? And, yeah, three, and I'm, I already got the guy waiting on the corner for an eight ball. Yeah. And I got the chick I'm going to take to dinner with the other 100, and I got a hotel room for 50. And I'm not even you wearing a condom. I'm crazy as fuck at that <laughs> oh, time. God. And no one's gonna show up. Dog, I would take him for three, four hundred. Yeah. Finally, after like six months, one day he came to me. and Goes, when is you know? I don't know who. I was telling Belushi was coming. <laughs> like I was just dropping names. John Candy's coming. I'm gonna get him. I did <laughs> one. I, I did one. <laughs> I did one. <laughs> <laughs> and I milked that poor Chinese guy. Oh, and then I had him on. I, had, I was so broke doing comedy. I oh. ate three meals a day in there. <laughs> I would go in there, Ron. Where's my tab? You've been in there like 11 when they opened for breakfast? 1101. <laughs> I was in there in the Use kitchen. The big shrimp, Ron. In Use the, the big kitchen shrimp. making my own soup. Oh, That's man. how pimp I had it in there. And he told me, don't make your own soup no more. <laughs> you take all shrimp. Fuck that shit. I would take the shrimp and the fucking uh, wontons. And that's once I made, I learned how to make Chinese soup. I didn't like it no more. See, I always thought they they had the same fucking uh, chicken broth for each thing. The, all they do is take the chicken broth, put it in, put three wontons in. They sprinkle it with pork and fucking uh, and fucking uh, yeah. onions, and they Green bring onion, it to you. Yeah. If it's egg drop, it's egg drop. If it's the other one, they mix it together with the noodles mm. and whatever. But it's all the same fucking Chinese mix. Yeah, I knew that shit down. I got to be so friendly with Ron that then I took over another Chinese restaurant. <laughs> this was the best. <laughs> I used to just take over now Chinese. Now you got to change. You're like, you a, change. You're like the mob becoming like silent partners. Listen to me. You're bleeding them dry. Oh, my God. I was taking over Chinese restaurants. You got a roster. <laughs> Listen to me. Now, Ron was in North. Ron was by the college. What was Bold. this guy's this name? Was, Eric? This was... That Ron was by the college, and after six months, one day Ron questioned me. He questioned my loyalty <laughs> and where his two thousand. I give you three thousand dollars. You eat here every day, and then no, no John Wayne, no John Candy, no Clint Eastwood. I had this poor guy sweating. 
And then I started bringing them stolen Very shit. Good. Come on. And then I would bring them stolen shit. Like if I would go to the mall and steal like three big pens, like the gold pens, yeah. I'd bring it. To, Where you get this? No, listen, it fell off the truck. You know, I knew yeah. the mafia. And then I had this other dude, an Italian guy, <laughs> and I used to tell him I was La Mano Negra, that I was coming to collect on Friday. This guy believed me and went to Tony Ladizio and told Tony Ladizio if I shook him down again, he was going to call the cops on me. This is Boulder, Colorado. I was going crazy. And I was just out of prison. But I was, I, I was just... I, uh, is this what you thought of during prison? Like all these little... No, 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 no. <laughs> so then, listen to me. So now, there's a Chinese restaurant in North Boulder that was men's and men's. It wasn't that bad. But they were next to the biggest video store in Colorado, which I heard now they're huge. Boulder on 28th Street or 30th Street, don't, cut, don't fuck it, by a rapper hole, they used to have a, a, a three-floored movie, a video chain. No porn. Oh, I mean, whatever you want. I went like in a three-story blockbuster? I used, I used like to go in there you? and fuck with them. Yeah, like a three-story blockbuster way before <laughs> blockbuster. Yeah. And I used to go in there and fuck with them. I used to go in there and ask them for Harry in your pocket. Just obscure names. And they'd, go, <laughs> and they'd hit me and go, we don't have it in stock, but we'll have it here in two days out of Denver. They had a warehouse in Denver that was huge. I, and that's where I used to go when I first started comedy. So I would go in and I rented every day the Rodney thing. and uh, Dangerfield? The Rodney Dangerfield yeah. special with all the guys on yeah, it. Young and comedians. I would, and I would also take the best of, what's the black one from HBO? Def Comedy Jam? Def John yeah, Comedy yeah, Jam yeah, with sure. Joe Torre as the warm-up. And I, would, I rented it so much that they wouldn't even charge me anymore. That's how good they were to me as yeah. a comedian. I'll never forget that. But next to that place was <laughs> a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> And they were okay. They had some good rice. They had some good... And the kids were good looking. They were nice boys. There was two or three boys and the mom. And I would go in there by myself. And then I started bringing people in there. And I would have people meet me there. That was the place where me and my buddies were sitting there one day. And I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Me and Rizzo. The kid's name was Rizzo. He's from Long Island. He's a big fat kid. And we're in there fucking eating spare ribs. We're going to go to the Comedy Works. He's driving me to the Comedy Works. Because I didn't have a car. And on Tuesdays, we would leave work together, and we'd go eat Chinese food, and we'd go. And this couple got up. After we were talking, this couple got up, and on the way out, they said, let me explain something to you. We were listening to your conversations. You two are barbarians. <laughs> he goes, if I wasn't with my wife, I'd take his boat outside and beat your ass. This guy was like an older guy. Anyway, what were you talking about? So I started going into this Chinese restaurant. You know, and I, once or twice a week, the lunch special wasn't bad. And I got to be honest with you, the food wasn't bad. And, you know, hey, Joey, hey, Tony, hey, whatever. I became friends with the guy. <laughs> One day I went in there. <laughs> I don't know, this is a true story. No, I'm I know it is. <laughs> with no do re me. And I told the guy the truth. I said, listen, man, I forgot my wallet. He goes, dog, you're always in here. You take it. Take it with you. I took it the food. And two days later, I brought him the $30. They were happy as shit. And after that, I became family. The mom talked to me. The brother talked to me. So I would talk to them more and more. I was lonely. I was going through a heartbreak with my ex-wife. And I would go in there three nights a week. You know me, dog. I'm simple. I could eat Chinese food every fucking day. They had Hell noodles yeah. for the soup. They had the whole thing. Uh, one day I had my daughter. I had the basement. I lived in the Rocky basement. I had no money. And I called them up like a man. And I said, listen, man, I'm in a bind. I got my daughter. I got no dog. What do you want? And when they came to my house, the brother sat me down. He goes, listen, you've been coming to our restaurant for a long time. I see you bring people in there. He goes, from now on, you're on a tab. And you pay us when you have the fucking tab. That could only happen oh, to yeah. me when I'm a starving comic living in a fucking basement, addicted to blow. I'm a fucking single dad. I got no dough, every penny. And I'm not feeling bad for me. I'm just telling you what I was going through. And look at this door that opens up for me. I could eat Chinese food every fucking day. And here's these people telling me, look, from now on. Call us. We'll deliver it, and we'll put on a tab. Hell yeah. And for a while, I would just give the kid a 20. He'd go, there's no tab. Because he was the owner, the, the delivery kid. They fucking worked. There were two kids. Well, finally, one day, I go, dog, I, I'm in there, and they're talking shit. And guess what happens? They're like, our delivery boy quit. <laughs> Uncle Joey got a license. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a map and some glasses. <laughs> And they're like, you want to deliver Chinese food? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll deliver Chinese food. <laughs> what nights you got? And they're like, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Give them to me. Fuck it. Dog, I was walking out of there with a yardstick. And Chinese food. And Chinese food and every Chinese night. And I became food. friends with them. And then, guess what Uncle Joey started doing? What, the, what Tony Soprano didn't want? 
people selling cocaine on the fucking Chinese <laughs> routes. <laughs> so every time I had delivery, I would go out and sell fucking blow at the same time. People would call me up. You got a gram of coke yet? Yeah, but you got to order Chinese food. Boom, and then order Chinese. Come on, God. Who the fuck do you think you guys are dealing with? <laughs> So I, I would tell the people. I mean, what was the what was the uh, code word? No, not that. I, uh, that's a good question. They would call and ask for Joey. I'm just saying, the and I would pick up the phone. But the increase that you of business you must have brought twenty five percent. Oh my god! And people going in yeah. there to see me. Oh come and to on! And I was yeah, just that's doing, what I'm talking. I was just about. gonna do stand up, <laughs> and here's where it gets better. <laughs> the delivery guy. The delivery guy. Twenty five percent. Listen to me, dog. And here's where it's getting. Better. And I'm I'm walking out there with a yardstick at night. I'm selling blood, and I'm weighing it. I'm doing everything there. And in those days, I was such a fiend. I would keep it there overnight. I would hide it there. And they would never use the back bathrooms. So there was nights I'd go in there and put a line of Coke out. Two lines. I'd do one. I'd forget. And I'd walk out. I'd come back two days later. That line of Coke was still at attention. It was still there with the American flag at attention, Jack. I couldn't believe it. These fucking Chinese dudes didn't snort fucking blood. It was tremendous, but here's where it gets better. So I'm there working, I'm hustling, I'm eating my meals there. I'm living like a doctor in there. I'm bringing my daughter in there. I'm running fucking coke out of there. One day I walk in there, like, hey, Joey, we run pool. You want to play pool? And I go, I'll play the fucking pool. And, like, and they, they thought they were cute. They're like, we, we only have one team left, Houston Rocket. And I go, I'll take the fuck with the team. Fuck you, I'll take the Rockets. The Rockets were like... The odds were like fucking 12 to 1 that they would even get to the second round. They won the championship. Yeah, yeah. When they, had it, when they gave me the 500 cash, you should have seen those motherfuckers. Not only was I running game out of there, after a while, listen, I swear to you guys, I've been with you guys for three years. You ready for this one? It got to the point, man, that if the phone rang five times, three of those calls were for Joey. <laughs> They couldn't believe it. Like, I, what you, Coke orders or? Coke orders. Three of five and twenty-five percent. Every delivery I made, I knew the people. Yeah. People knew I was there, and half of them knew. So I knew it, it no longer became random people ordering from this Chinese place. It became you knew every fucking. Me and person. my creepy fucking yeah. cocaine yeah. chain. <laughs> and there was a fucking exactly. trailer park where uh, the Kaidlu. What did I tell you? His name was Alex. Remember I told you I was in the halfway. He called right. me to the show early on. The very beginning. Mexican dude. Mexican dude. Years later, Alex lived in that trailer park behind there, and in the back of that trailer park in Boulder, it was like fucking La Bamba. <laughs> it was like twenty illegal Mexicans oh, back there. <laughs> Look, that's why I was picking up coke. Listen, if cocaine was in those days, wait, that's where you went to get it. Listen to me. It was it was a trailer park with white people living in the front, and then as you got to the back of the trailer park, like it was one house white, one house Mexican, but as you got to the back of it, this is 1980, fuck, this is 1994, as you got to the back of the trailer park, it got dark, but they were illegals, and they were the ones that mowed lawns and shit, but the half of them were there selling fucking powder, and I mean right off the fucking brick. I don't know if they were cartels. Then I mean, pop, and the thing would come out in the air like it would float. Are you serious? And they wouldn't even use a scale. <laughs> they wouldn't even use a scale, these motherfuckers. Yeah. They became such friends with me, me talking Spanish, that I would go there and I'd pay them for two ounces and I'd take them home. It was three and a half ounces because they'd just break it, pop, and they just put chunks all their way and, they, and I'd take it. They were brown. They were brown Mexicans, dark, like they walked here, like they were out of fucking <laughs> And I forget what their name was. You know me, dog. You know me, dog. I never fucking asked. I never fucking asked how they got here, if they used suntan lotion, <laughs> what brand it was. I never I asked them gave dick. a fuck about SPF. Dog, yeah, I didn't no. ask these motherfuckers <laughs> nothing. All I knew is they had some fucking coke that was tremendous. I was making money. I was working on this Chinese restaurant. And you know what, man? That was one of the... I knew I had no future there. I knew they were going to figure it out. And I remember going in there and going, I'm going to go on the road as a comedian. And they were all very nice to me. They were Vietnamese. They weren't Chinese. But they cooked Chinese. And they were so nice to me that I was like, fuck the war. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to forgive you. What am I going to do? I'm going to hold a grudge against you? <laughs> you, hold, you hold a personal grudge? But wait, I don't know. I'm a little kid from Cuba. I come here and I'm in the country's at war with somebody. I want to be an American. So psychological, I'm supposed to fucking hate you if I want to be this gung-ho fucking white kid. That's what, in the back of my mind, I wouldn't even talk to Vietnamese people. We're <laughs> a fucking war with you. It took years. 
It took years to unwind my stupidness and my. Uh, you got mad that I got Korean dumplings? Oh, please. You know, we just went to war. <laughs> he, with call, he called me and he said the Chinese were here first. They got dibs. <laughs> they got dibs. You got to go ask them respect. They got dibs of Chinese. They've been here since the fucking railroads. Yo, what the, what the fuck? The Koreans been throwing sidekicks for 30 years. Teaching Taekwondo. The fucking uh, the Asian Chinese people were here with the fucking railroads and shit.